What's going on everyone? It is Andrew here from Apple Insider and we are going to take an in-depth look at AirPlay 2, Apple's major update to their wireless streaming protocol. We're going to tackle what is new, how it works, and what it means for your existing AirPlay speakers. The biggest update to AirPlay 2 is going to be multi-room audio. A feature that's been available on the Mac inside of iTunes for some time now makes it way to iOS and tvOS. Whenever you access your AirPlay preferences on your, your iOS device, you can jump into the music controls there. You can see all the AirPlay 2 speakers below. And by tapping on the actual AirPlay icon, you can jump in and actually cast to one or several AirPlay 2 speakers all at the same time. If I want to play some songs by Cage the Elephant inside of the dining room, easy, just tap on that. But if I want to go to more speakers than that, I just want it through the entire house, I can do the same thing by casting it over to the living room. You'll notice how they disappear from their standalone cards and join in that multi-selected list on the top. I can control the volume independently for each individual speaker, moving them up and down, or I can adjust them at the same time. And as a really nice touch, if the volumes are actually offset, like maybe I have one speaker a little bit louder than the other, as I move them together and they're offset, it'll keep that same balance of audio between both of them. You may notice how some speakers have circles and check marks and others don't. The Apple TV and Libertone Zip are completely barren on that right hand side. And that's the difference between an AirPlay 1 and an AirPlay 2 device. If I want to send audio to an AirPlay 1 speaker like the AirPlay or the Libertone Zip, Whenever I tap on that, it's just going to go ahead and kick me off of all of my AirPlay 2 speakers. I can choose as many AirPlay 2 speakers as I want, but only one AirPlay speaker at the same time. Aside from that multi-room audio, there's a bunch of other small benefits as well. You can now tell Siri to play audio in any of those AirPlay 2 speakers. There's a significantly increased buffer, which should reduce drops and latencies that were experienced before. And it's going to be a lot quicker to actually send that signal across. You can also use Siri to move music so I can ask her to move the music to the living room from my HomePod. So it was playing on the HomePod. I asked her to move it to the living room. I'm going to jump back in. You can see it went from dining room and now it is playing in the living room. So really handy as you move about your house, just ask Siri to play the music in the room that you're in and she can do that. Luckily, using AirPlay 2 is pretty familiar if you've used AirPlay 1. It's in the same spots whether you're in those AirPlay controls inside a control center or you go into your favorite audio app and find the AirPlay icon like Music, Audible, Pandora, Spotify, whatever it may be. But there is a new home for AirPlay speakers because AirPlay 2 speakers are now part of HomeKit. Inside of the Home app, you'll actually see any AirPlay 2 speakers show up, including my living room Apple TV, my bedroom Apple TV, or my HomePod that's in the dining room. I can play and pause them just by tapping on their little cards here, and they can be added to favorites and accessed from with any home widgets. Unfortunately, that's where the home kit pretty much ends. There's not anything else you can do. It would be really nice to be able to add speakers into scenes and automations, but that is simply not available right now. If you go to add accessories to a scene, they're, they're just not there. Same thing when you're going to add them to an automation. It simply doesn't exist, at least not yet. Hopefully we can see something around that at WWDC. AirPlay 2 is not just for your iOS and HomePod devices as well, it is of course for the Apple TV. So there's a few things to know about AirPlay 2 on the Apple TV. Jumping into settings, there's now an option for room because again, HomeKit device. So you have to choose a room within your home to place this actual speaker. So I can go through the list, I can pick a room that this is actually gonna be showing up in, allows you to just control a speaker by talking about a room in general instead of having to know the name for the device. Not only can you change that here on the Apple TV itself, but it can be changed within the home app on your iOS device. One easy way to access all this AirPlay 2 stuff is just by holding down the play pause button right from the home screen. Now you'll see here, this is the Apple TV that we're on here in the living room. It is casting audio to my MacBook Pro as I'm doing a screen recording, but I can choose any different AirPlay 2 speaker, which again has the circle on the right hand side or a check mark. And there are non AirPlay 2 devices like the Libertone Zip showing up. Moving across, I can jump between any of my AirPlay 2 capable devices, including my bedroom Apple TV and my HomePod. I can send audio from any of those devices to any number of other AirPlay 2 devices. There's a lot of other small benefits to AirPlay 2 that you're just going to start to notice the more that you use it. It is more stable, there's less buffering, there's less drops and lag in between things. 
Unfortunately, the Mac still does not have AirPlay 2 or HomeKit for that matter. So you're still gonna have a lot of those problems going from your Mac to a HomePod or an Apple TV, but hopefully we'll hear something more concrete about that improvement at WWDC. One really handy feature is now AirPlay 2 audio won't get interrupted all the time by things like phone calls or game. You can continue to have those in the background and keep music playing the whole time. Out of the gate, the Apple TV 4, Apple TV 4K, and the HomePod will get AirPlay 2 after you update to 11.4. Many third-party speakers, like Libertone, have already promised updates to their existing hardware to support AirPlay 2, while some are not going to be so lucky. Like the Ren V5, it's a beautiful, gorgeous, great-sounding AirPlay speaker, but AirPlay 2 is more demanding, and there's simply not enough onboard memory to be able to upgrade and taking advantage of the new features. This makes things a bit murky on what speakers will be able to be updated and which ones won't. Apple's been trying to make this a little bit easier by putting together a little document on their HomeKit website to show all compatible speakers that have been announced. Unfortunately, it isn't exhaustive, so people are still left wondering if they will get updated or not. AirPlay 2 is a fantastic update and the biggest one since it was originally introduced as AirTunes back in 2004. But there are still some clear limitations, like having your phone stuck in the middle, questionable upgrades for third-party speakers, and no Mac support. Let us know how it's been working for you down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media, and we'll see you in the next video.